All right. So this is what um, you would admit, or you missed today in math if you were absent. We're on page 37 of the packet. This is called simplifying expressions. So what we're going to do is, um, it's kind of similar to what we did in the last video in the remote assignment, where we <clears throat> combined like terms. We simplified different types of expressions by combining terms that have the same variable. Today we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it in a, a, a sort of a shortcut in a simpler way. We're also going to practice writing and simplifying different types of expressions. But we're going to start off with a little warm-up here. We're, going to, we're just going to go through and, and simplify each one of these. We'll start with this one. This says four groups of 6x. <clears throat> now, we can kind of actually use the distributive property for this. There's only one term in the parentheses. But if you multiply 4 times 6x, you would just get 24x. That's using um, distributive property. It's also showing that it, it's kind of like four groups of 6x, which would be which would be 24x. So getting rid of that parentheses is going to help us simplify. Now with this one here, we're looking for like terms, 7x and x, if we combine those. 7x's plus another x would be 8x. Plus, there's only eight ones left. That would be eight. That's simplifying it. It's combining like terms. <coughs> and again, that's all we can do because we can't add 8x and x together. Or, I'm sorry, 8x and 8. All right, this next one is just x plus x plus x. Well, how many x's is that? One, two, three. That's three x's. So you can write it like 3x or 3 times x. Either way, that would be simplifying. We're combining the terms together that we can. All right, this one's a little different. What we can do with this, it's like uh, we have 3 times x in a group and then multiply that by 11. What we can do is using the commutative property, we can write that 11 in front and have 3 groups, or I'm sorry, 11 groups of 3x. And then we can use distributive property. So 11 times a group of 3x would be 33x's. Or 33 times x would be the answer to that one. So again, we use the commutative property. We put 11 in front. And then we can use distributive property to multiply. All right, here's another example of when we can use distributive property <clears throat> to get rid of the parentheses. We can multiply the 5 by both terms in the parentheses. 5 times 4x <clears throat> would be 20x. 5 times 3 would be 15. So whenever you see parentheses, or most times, you can use distributive property to simplify it. <clears throat> this one here, we can combine like terms. Five. We see x's here. 5x and 3x would be 8x's plus 4y's and 7y's, that would be 11y's. So we went from four terms down to two terms by combining like terms. All right, with this one, we can use, uh, well, we have to get the 14y and the 22y together. So what we could first do is if we put the 22y first, y plus x, we just kind of use commutative property to put the 22y up front. Then we can use associated property to group these together like this. Now we group the y's together. <clears throat> we can do this. 22y plus 14y is 26y plus x. So that one, that one took a couple steps, but we can use those different properties to help us, you know, group the numbers differently. This is like seven groups of 8x. Can use this, there's only one term in the parentheses. So seven times 8x would be 56x. So again, these are just different ways to simplify expressions. If you see something like this, 3x and 2x you can combine. 3x plus 2x would be 5x, and then we have a 9y <clears throat> that we can't do anything with because these two are x's and the y is kind of by itself there. So 5x plus 9y would be the simplified version. 
For this one, we'd use distributive property. We can multiply the 7 by both terms in the parentheses. 7 times 3x would be 21x plus 7 times y would be 7y. And that's it. That's all you do there. All right, these last two also look like distributive property. 4 times 3x, 4 times 2x, 4 times, whoop, 9y. Whoops. Whoop, again, I'm getting a phone call. Pardon me. All right. Um, so we're going to multiply the 4 by each term in here. 4 times 3x would be 12x. Plus 4 times 2x would be 8x. Plus 4 times 9y would be 36y. So we actually can simplify this a little further because 12x plus 8x, we would get 20x plus 36y. So we can go all the way down to that. All right, last one here. Oh, we can also use distributive property. We can multiply the 4 by both terms in the parentheses. 4 times 5x would be 20x, plus 3 times 4 would be 12, plus 2x, plus 9. So now we can combine the x's together, the whole numbers together. 20x plus 2x would be 22x. 12 plus 9 is 21. All right, so that was just a little warm up there to help us simplify. Now we're going to practice writing expressions and simplifying them. We've done something similar to this before. But again, our focus is going to be on uh, uh, simplifying it. All right. It says three friends will pay X dollars for each, each for admission to the museum, plus one dollar each to view the mummy exhibit. A fourth friend will pay admission but will not view the mummy. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost. Well, first thing is we have to write the let statement. I'm just going to draw a line down the middle here. We're going to let x, that's the letter they gave us, equal, it says cost of, cost of admission. It's how much it is to get in. So I'm thinking, like, how many tickets did they have to buy? Well, three friends paid for the admission and then $1 for the mummy. A fourth friend will just pay the admission. So there are four people buying the ticket. So that would be 4 times x. Plus, these three people are also paying a dollar to see the mummy. I would be, I would be one of those people, I think. So... Three people are buying the mummy and the mum or the ticket to the mummy, and that is a dollar each. So four people buy a ticket, three people go to the mummy. We can simplify this actually by multiplying three times one. So we get four times x plus three. That's really as simple as you can get with this one. This next question though is is related to this one. So we're going to use the same let statement. So we're going to use the same one over here. I'm just going to draw that little arrow. It says, write and simplify an expression for the total cost of six friends to go to the museum if only four friends view the mummy. So six friends go to the museum. That means six tickets. That means because the cost of admission is X, we're going to use the same variable because it's kind of the same situation. 6X would be the cost of the tickets. And then four people are going to see the mummy, and the mummy is a dollar. So it would be four times four people are going times a dollar. That would be the total cost of what they had spent, though we don't know what x is. Um, four times one we can do, which is four, so it would be six x, six times x plus four. So you can see here, like this one is four people going to the museum, three people going to see the mummy, because it's only a dollar. Six people going to the museum, four people going to see the mummy for a dollar. All right. All right, let's check this one out. This one looks interesting. We got a family of seven went to Wegmans. Nice. The two adults each got a sub for S dollars. 
The five children got a sub for the same price as the adult and each got a cookie for $1.50. Write and simplify an expression to represent the amount the family spent at Wiggins. All right, the amount we don't know that we'd need to know to find this would be S. And they give, they give us S. They say S is the cost of a sub. That S will cost of a sub. Okay. So I guess what we could do this in a couple different ways, but one way we could do it is think, well, how many people bought subs? Two adults got a sub and five children. So all seven of them got a sub. So to show the cost of seven subs, it would be seven times S. That's seven subs. Plus the five children also each got a cookie. So five children got a cookie for $1.50. I'm putting that in parentheses just because I don't want the dot to look like a decimal point. So if we knew how much the subs were, we'd find the total cost. For now, we can only do the five times 150. So let's do it. I'm just doing it off this side here. I'm going to put the 150 on top, multiply by five. Let's see what we get. Zero times five is zero. Five times five is 25. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7, and we have two decimal places. So we're going to bump that decimal point down two spots. 1, 2. Oh, yeah. That doesn't seem right. I don't know why I had the 2 there. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is it should be 7. I think I said 7. I might have written 2. All right, so the cookies, all the cookies, 5, five cookies would be 750. So you got 7 times S, which is the cost of the subs, plus the 750, which is the total cost of of the cookies. So depending on what the sub was, that would tell you the total cost. Right? But that expression would represent the total cost of all of this, all of what they spent at the Wegman sub shop. Those cookies are pretty good, by the way, if you've never had them before. All right. This one says the farmer's market sells fruit baskets. Nice. Each basket has a has apples, three apples and one pear. Use A to represent the cost of each apple, and P to represent the cost of each pear. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of five baskets. We're going to need two let statements for this, A and P. So A is the cost of an apple, it says. Let A equal cost of an apple. And then P is the cost of a pear. It's nice when they give us the... Uh, variables. It's a nice gesture. Okay, now, each basket is three apples and a pear. Three apples and one pear. So for each basket, the cost of three apples would be three times A, plus the cost of one pear would be one times P, or just you could just write P. Now, that's one basket. That's one. 3 times A would give you the cost of the apples, plus 1 times P is the pair. To find the cost of 5, though, we would need to find 5 groups of this. 5 groups of 3A plus 1P. That's one way to write the expression. However, we want to simplify it, and that's getting rid of the groups. So we're going to get rid of those groups. So we're going to multiply 5 by both terms. We're going to use distributive property to get rid of the parentheses, to ungroup it. 5 times 3a would be 15a times a, plus 5 times 1p would be 5 times p, or 5p. So that's the simplified version. These are both equivalent. They equal the same amount, but this one's just a little simpler than, than the one up top. Okay. Oh, this one's interesting. This one actually reminds me of that one we did about the Wendy's Extreme, or the Wendy's Intensity Meal here. Tim Hortons created a breakfast bundle. In the breakfast bundle, you get 10 Timbits and two bagels. Use T to represent the cost of each Timbit and B to represent the cost of each bagel. Write and simplify an expression to represent the cost of five breakfast bundles. Similar question. Similar question. So I'm going to write the let statements. They give us the variables, which is nice. We're going to let T equal cost of a Timbit 
They're usually what, like 10 cents or something? Let uh, B equal cost of a bagel. Cost of a bagel, or some say bagel. Depends on where you're from, I suppose. <clears throat> All right. So in a breakfast bundle, you get 10 of these. So it would be 10... 10 times T would be the cost of all the Timbits. Plus, you get two of these. Two times B would be the cost of the bagels. However, that's only one breakfast bundle. You're getting five of these, or somebody's getting five of these. So we want five groups of this. So we put in parentheses, five groups. And we can use distributor property, just like we did in the last one. Five um, groups of 10 Timbits would be 50 Timbits. Five times 10 is 50. Plus, five times two is 10 times B. And this, if we knew the cost of the Timbit and the bagel, that would be the total cost of five of those beautiful breakfast bundles, triple B. All right. So now we're just going to do a little bit more practice, and we'll be all set. It's going to kind of go over the, what, we've, what we've done already. So if you want to try these on your own, feel free. Go for it. Five groups of 6x. We could use distributor property there. Five groups of 6x would be 30x. We can simplify this by combining the like terms. 2x and 7x we can combine into 9x. And then we just have, we're left with the 5y. Can't add those up because they're different variables, of course. This one here, we can use distributive property. We can use the arrows. Four groups of 2x would be 8x, plus four groups of 5y, 20y. Can't add those up. Different variables, different variables. Okay, last one here in this row. Simplify eight groups of 6x. We're going to have to un ungroup those plus 4x plus y. Well, 8 groups of 6x, 8 times 6 would be 48x plus 4x. We're going to bring this down, plus y. Now we can add these up. 48x plus 4x equals 52x plus y. Nice. All right. Let's try to say, oh, we got Michaela buying some, some skirts. Michaela bought five skirts at X, X dollars each. Three of the five skirts came with a matching top of an, uh, four, and it should be four an additional nine dollars each. Write and, write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of the purchase. So we're going to let X equal cost of a skirt. Let's do it. She's buying five of them. Let X, maybe they were on sale. But there is this deal where you get a matching top for nine bucks each. That's not bad. At least I think it's not bad. I'm not sure. Cost of a skirt. All right, so we're thinking, how many skirts is Michaela buying? She's buying five. It says here, five skirts. So the cost of the five skirts would be five times X. Now, with those five skirts, three of them came with a matching top, only three. And each of those matching tops worth nine bucks. So this is, these are the skirts. For the tops, it would be three tops times nine. That's how much they were. We can simplify this because we can do three times nine, which is 27. So 27 would be the amount for the tops. We're not sure how much the skirts would be, but 5x is all we can do at this point. It's the best we can do. All right, now we're swinging by Claire's after we get our skirts and our taps. We're going to Claire's for a gift bag. And in this gift bag, there's five bottles of nail polish, two tubes of lip gloss. Use P to represent the cost of each bottle of nail polish, G to represent each cost, cost each the cost of each tube of lip gloss. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of eight gift bags. Oh, boy, someone's getting a lot of gift bags. So we got P equal cost of a, we'll just say a nail polish. I know that sounds kind of strange, but um, we're going to let G equal cost of lip gloss. Okay. 
Now, how many how many nail polishes do you get? Five nail polishes. You get five of them. So to find the cost of the nail polishes, it would be five times P plus you get two lip glosses. That would be two times G. But that's only one. That's not all. That's only one of those. You need eight. You need eight. So we're going to do eight groups of that. Eight groups. Put in parentheses, we're going to make eight groups. Then we're going to use distributive property to ungroup. Find how many total nail polishes, how many total lip glosses you get in that wonderful gift bag. All right, 8 times 5P, 8 groups of 5P would be 40. That would be 40 uh, total nail polishes. Plus 8 times 2G would be 16G. That would be, uh, what do you call it, 16 total glosses, lip glosses. All right.